There you go. All right, we're live. Welcome to Facebook, everybody. I'm Steve Ray. That guy over there is Jeff Maxwell. And that guy with the beard is Jed Lorette of Jack Daniels. Probably the, this is probably the biggest guest. And Rub Bagby, don't get mad if you're watching. Oh man, that puts Jed, a lot of Jed pressure Lorette. on. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of pressure there, Jed. Rub, rub, all, oh, rub, 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 all. He's he's sensitive. He's a he's a sensitive guy. Okay, let me turn off the other one right here. I can do that. And that includes. Uh, let's see who else. Robbie Royal's been on the show. Robbie Royal. Oh. Malcolm Reed. That's all right. That's all right. I'll just make sure my boss hears this. We've uh, we've got Jed Lorette on everybody tonight from uh, Jack Daniels. He is the senior brand ambassador. We'll be talking about all things barbecue. The Jack Daniels um, Invitational coming up, number thirty six. Jed, thirty two, thirty two coming up. Um, that's right, because Travis won number thirty one. There was no thirty two in the last year, so this would be thirty two. So number thirty two coming up October the eighth in Lynchburg, Tennessee. Uh, going on right now on the KCBS circuit is the um, American Royal. So uh, we'll be talking about that next week. And just hang on. We'll be going to the radio side of things in just a moment. Jed, thank you so much for joining us. We sure appreciate it. Uh, it's my pleasure. In three weeks, the two biggest events of the year in barbecue. Yeah, we, and don't forget, we've got coming up, we've got the World Food Championships in November. Uh, we got the KCBS. The, Smith, the Smithfield event. Uh, is that the KCBS one, November 11th, I think? Or, yep. So yep. In the next, that, that's in the next the, six weeks, you got yeah. uh, four or five of the biggest events of the year. A bunch of majors coming up. It's that time of year. This is the way golf used to be before they messed up the, right. the golf schedule. Remember, you know, remember how exciting the majors were until they messed them all up? And Jeff Cates on line one. Okay. Once we'll go to Jeff. Jeff is at the God Bowl, Silverdale versus Ford Buchanan. Hundred dollars. Private Christian twenty five thousand dollars. Once an hour, started at eight on Talk One Hundred Two Point Three. Talk Radio One Hundred Two Point Three. It's the Al's Nest Barbecue Show live with your host Steve Ray and my assistant radio pitmaster Jeff Maxwell. The Al's Nest Barbecue Show live is brought to you by Green Mountain Pellet Cookers. You know you want one, so just buy it. Which are barbecue products? All the great products from the two-time world champion, David Bosca. By Michelin Tires. The only thing separating you from the road are your tires. Make sure you're riding on Michelin. By all the rubs and sauces from Malcolm Reed and the staff at How to Barbecue Right. And by the best charcoal on planet Earth, Royal Oak. Pellets, briquettes, and lump. If the Royal Oak name is on it, you can count on it. Follow Al's Nest Barbecue on Facebook, Instagram, and catch our podcast on all the popular podcasting sites including spotify fire up that smoker it's time to cook something it is time to cook something welcome to the weekend eve this is steve ray with me jeff maxwell and we have got a special edition show for you tonight here on the owl's nest barbecue show live here on talk radio 102.3 our phone number is 267-1023-423-267-1023 our broadcast partners backyard smokers and Dead Broke Barbecue, both located on Facebook and on YouTube. Joe Varner in the studio. You stay in touch, so we will be in touch as well. You know where to find us on all of these social media connections. Before we go to our special guest, we're going to head right to Boyd Buchanan as the Silverdale Seahawks are invading the Boyd Buchanan Buccaneers as we speak. Jeff Kate, tell me about this. Tell me about this fantastic matchup. Yeah, yeah. Good evening once again, Steve. Happy Friday. Uh, yeah, Friday's been one thing around here. Obviously, well, besides the start of the weekend, around here, everybody loves the high school football. And the Silverdale Seahawks are taking on those Boy Buchanan Buccaneers, like you just said, Steve. Silverdale got on the board less than a minute into the game, fifty-one yard touchdown pass, and they actually just got an interception on Boy Buchanan. So you heard from, on the opposite sideline there the Seahawks crowd. Definitely letting their uh, their team know they, they they saw that play and they're they're enthused about it. But speaking of enthused, let's talk about another, another thing on this. You know, every Friday night, besides what we love about the best football, starts with that it's food for sure. Well, um, you know, walking into this game tonight, it was an earlier kickoff, so 
that meant, you know, not as many tailgaters were out. They were all packed up here, ready to go. It's a big night here at Boyd Buchanan's uh, school region matchup between these two. So what do I do? I go to the go to the concession stand once again, find the you know the smoke signal went up once again. Talked to uh, the grill master. His name was Matt Wynn. You know, super nice guy. Tried one of the hamburgers, uh, and uh, you know, let me just tell you, just the perfect amount of char. It wasn't you know, it, like we talked about with hot dogs last week, Steve. You know, it's it, it's very easy to let a, a hot dog get burned on a grill if you're not paying attention. Well, Matt Wynn definitely did not let these things burn. And he said they go through between 125 and 150 hamburger patties every single home game here at the Boyd Buchanan School at, da- at David Boyd Field. So, um, you know, I, he, he expects that to be hit tonight, like I said, between these two uh, region rivals in a big game like this. And uh, I could definitely say there, there was – and looking at the crowd just from the field – up to the concession stand, there's probably a crowd of at least uh, 10 deep looking to get something. I'm sure those hamburgers and hot dogs are Absolutely. Be, uh, you know, get going going out the window very, very quickly. But, yeah, uh, Mr. Matt Wynn, grill master, and I, I was blown away by that number of, you know, of hamburgers going out on any given Friday night. He expects to get to that 150, if not between the 125 and 150 hamburger patty marks. So, uh, yeah, festive atmosphere here so far. Ball's going across the field. And, uh if you hear the crowd in the background, Silverdale just had another touchdown, 49 yards. Uh, right now it is 12 to nothing with the extra point pending. So a good start for the Seahawks to go with the good concession stands here at Boyd Buchanan School. So uh, definitely, uh, you know, you can smell, you, you can smell the, uh, the the stuff being cooked on the grill in the air, and you can see the ball going through the air for the Seahawks early on in this one for sure. All right, Jeff K., thank you so much, and congratulations to Matt Wynn matting the Boyd Buchanan uh, concession stand, and that's two touchdowns while we were on the air for Silverdale with with our special our special host Jeff Kate. So uh, that was supposed to be a tight game. So now listen, all you people from Silverdale, make sure you hit that concession stand at halftime if you guys are up forty to nothing, and make Matt's wish come true. Thank you, Jeff Kate, so much. The Jeff Kate tailgate report, of course, brought to you by Green. Silverdale thirteen, Boy Buchanan zero. Hot dogs are undefeated as always. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate you. Of course, the Jeff K. Tailgate Report brought to you by the Green Mountain Grill Pellet Cooker, available at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Ottawa. Now let's go to our guest, Jed Lorette. Jed, thank you so much for joining us. Jed is the the senior uh, Jack Daniels ambassador, brand ambassador, coming to us live from the holler in Lynchburg. Oh, thanks for having me. Oh, thanks, thanks so much, Jed. Thanks, for y'all, for reaching out to the show and – and getting you on, thanks to Greg Lure for uh, giving us the heads up. I can't tell you how excited Jeff and I are, are to, to have stoked. you on, man. We're, we're stoked. Uh, one thing we like to talk about, I even went down to the liquor store behind me. I don't know if you can see it there. I wish I could I say, can. I wish I could say Jed sent it to me, but maybe maybe someday. <laughs> <laughs> but I plopped down, I think I plopped down the $50 just for, uh, just for a prop, and it was worth it. That's <laughs> a beautiful uh, bottle. Yeah. You should see me at a wing competition. Trading wings for whiskey. Yeah, we've done that. <laughs> that last year, <laughs> we, yeah, we did I, that. I came back with we about did that. We eight did bottles that. of whiskey and fed every single one of those whiskey pe- uh, people. Oh my goodness! Jed, tell us, tell us what it's like to have the greatest job in the world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh. other than Hugh Hefner. So you want me to describe what it's like to work at Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory for adults? <laughs> yes, it's a walk through the park. I mean, I see people from all over the world, and it's not just me. We have a whole crew of people walking folks around. Um, it's it's really just the most exciting job I've ever had in my life. As far as like the day to day is always a little different, you know. Uh, yeah, we're walking through the same stuff, but the guest experience they'll ask you questions that just kind of makes you think about, well, maybe I, I should be adding that to my talking points because this guy. He's asking something that I normally don't talk about. So it, it's a great place. It, it's a, a small town. It, it's the one spot on the entire planet that's making every drop of Jack Daniels whiskey. Mm-hmm. And it's, of course, it's, it's so historical with the, uh, with, the, with the history of Jack Daniels, how it started, how it went up through Prohibition, how it got going again. Um, I, I encourage everybody that it's in our area just for a, uh, a history tour, if nothing else, um, head over to Lynchburg to um, – to uh, experience the Jack Daniels tour. You know, I told you when we were talking on um, Wednesday, Jed, somebody in our uh, our tour group last time we went through asked our tour guide, he said, what happens if you get caught drinking on the job? 
And the guy you looked at him. You become a tour guide. Yeah, that's right. Encouraged. <laughs> <laughs> he said, they make you a tour guide. They promote you. <laughs> yeah, they make you a tour guide. And, of course, everybody oh just God. erupted. What – um. We're going to get to the barbecue here in just a second. You told me an, an interesting story. You know, I, I, I visited um, uh, Mulberry, Tennessee uh, last summer, mm-hmm. which is the, the next wide spot after Winchburg, and uh, was over at Byron Chisholm's farm at a, at a, at a uh, uh, barbecue school by David Bosca. And uh, the people all that were there at the school helping Byron were employees of the Jack Daniels uh, distillery. And uh, and their mamas and daddies were employees. Tell tell Absolutely. us a story about your family because uh, I think everybody that that lives in Lynchburg has a, if they don't work there they have a family connection there. Yeah, um, the whole community is thriving off the fact that Jack Daniels is sitting where it is. Um, the fact is about me. I, I was born south of New Orleans, Louisiana. Moved up here in 1985. Uh, we moved up here because my mom had an uncle that married a local lady. Uh, that's my great aunt Liz. She worked here in the fifties, sixties and seventies bottling whiskey in our oldest bottling location. And, uh, I moved back about seven years ago and, uh, started working here. I actually have a almost 22 year old daughter who works in the bottle shop. Wow. And so it's a family legacy uh, and there's many, many generations of people who, have their family legacy here at Jack Daniels. Now, what is one of the, um, like one of your duties as a senior brand ambassador? What, um, what do you get to do on like on a daily basis? That, I mean, besides uh, hanging out with cool people. Yeah, besides like, hanging out where they make liquor. Yeah, talking on radio shows. Yeah. I mean, it, it's pretty. It's a pretty boring job. I got to be honest with you. Um, my daily, it's tours. Uh, I could do anything that they need me to do, but it's primarily tours. I do private tours. Uh, when celebrities come in, I get to hang out with them. Uh, tasting. I, I, I'm an official taster here at Jack Daniels. Um, it, it's the cross I bear. It's, Terrible It's just job. something I have to do. Terrible Yeah. Um, <laughs> most, most, most famous person that you've got to, to, to give the tour to? All right. If I get to name drop, then I get That's to okay. name drop my – my favorite one, right? right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I've gotten to see quite a few people. All of them have their own celebrity, but uh, I, I grew up watching wrestling, uh, 80s and 90s, and I had The Undertaker here. Uh, it's been about four or five months ago now, and he is a giant man, <laughs> 6'10", super nice. He only wanted to talk about hog hunting from helicopters in Texas. <laughs> My guy was Randy, guy, Matt, though. Randy Savage. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. you, man. This All right, real. let's stick to barbecue, guys, yeah. not wrestling. <laughs> now, now, come on. I, now, now the, under, the Undertaker, I, I must say, is, is quite the quite the uh, status symbol. But c- come on now. let's We can do better than The Undertaker. All right. I mean, any, like, um, George Clooney come through? Uh, no, <laughs> anybody like that? Uh, <laughs> Uh, there's a celebrity. Um, I'm not free to drop names on him. He hasn't shown up yet, but uh, there's somebody coming on Friday. I, I had Ludacris on tour. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you know who that is. He's yeah. a singer. Yeah, I yeah, know who I'll Ludacris just, is. I'm, I'm just looking at him in the camera going, I'm not sure if he knows who Ludacris is. I am hip. <laughs> I am I'm 62 and white, but I know who Ludacris is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, what about what, what about Peyton Manning? Surely, surely you got a Peyton Manning story. Everybody in Tennessee has got a Peyton Manning story. I I actually uh, got it, I didn't have Peyton Manning. We did have a group from the uh, Miami Dolphins come up here, uh, but that was before I got started. I had Kelly Pickler on my tour. Okay, okay, yeah, that's pretty Kelly's, strong. Yeah, she's super sweet. I yeah. mean, great lady. And uh, it, it's it doesn't matter who it is, whether it's celebrity or a guest. Everybody is treated with the same respect, and uh, we love having them. I mean, we'll roll out the red carpet for a family of five showing up. You know, it's it's just our house, so we're hanging out with people, whether you're a celebrity or not. Oh, I, I, could, I could see, that. One, I of could see our, that. one of our regular listeners, Al Salvage, is if you've never been to the Hollow, you need to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. You need to go. Absolutely. Um, is your favorite part of the tour when you take him over to that big, uh, that big barrel when this, when it's turning to sludge and get him to kneel down or bend over and take a big whiff? And, I, I got to be honest with you. Yeah. And today it was, 
it was between its uh, zero and 24 hour period. Uh-huh. Uh, I had a group that were buying a barrel of whiskey from us and that guy leaned over and he took a snort of that mash fermentation and yeah, he hit the wall behind yeah. him. I mean, I, I've hit that wall. I hit that wall. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, fun. It's though. fascinating. We need to sell a t-shirt. And I've, I've hit the wall with hydrogen. What is it? Hydrogen dioxide or something like that. What uh, comes out uh, of it? Hydrogen. No, it's carbon, carbon, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. CO2. CO2. Yeah. All right. Boy, it'll, it'll clean your sinuses. Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're, we're curing people. We're cleaning them up. <laughs> All right. We're going we're gonna to take our first break. We're, we're here with Jed Lorette, the senior brand ambassador from Jack Daniels. And when we come back, we're going to talk about Jack Daniels and barbecue in just a short minute right here on the Owl's Nest Barbecue Show Live on Talk Radio 102.3. Mike Keith's keys to the game. Bob Kessling's big orange hotline. Sport talk. Chemistry wasn't my big point. Might have to have a new <laughs> segment on the show. Perry Collins is a huge Undertaker fan. <laughs> yeah. oh. Wrestling and barbecue. We could do it. We could do it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the other, the the other funny thing on the, you know, there's a lot of action on the thread with Tommy and all the normal guys, but um, Ken Smith goes, Steve, I think I got some barbecue, or I get some. Uh, Beard competition in the barbecue business with Jed. Yeah, we have uh, our our buddy Ken Smith who does a, a does a wonderful podcast called uh, is it Faces to Places Faces to Places Faces podcast. to Places podcast. Jed, it's it's a, a back home thing. He will he'll I guarantee you Ken will say how can you put me in touch with Jed after we do this. Tell, tell him to contact the visitor center and if he wants to walk around with me. We'll we'll mic up and we'll walk. I just yeah. guarantee you, he just had a heart attack. Yeah, he's <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, hey, hit me up, Ken. We'll hook it up. We'll do it together. That's what we've been talking about doing that faces. To hey, that'd together. be great if you haven't been. That'd we'll be a ride great together. To yeah, we'll ride together. We'll do that together. And deal. I'll, we'll set that up. Our buddy Tom he had is calling in. Tom, that was a good. Uh, Tom did his first uh, YouTube video this week. Sent it yes, to me. He did oh, a great wonderful. Uh huh. We did talk about grill grates, and that was a neat. He sent it to me too. He did yep, a great neat, job. Neat little, um, neat little video he did. I told him next time, get them out there on the grill and put some steaks on them, and really, really put on the dog. Yep. You know, put yeah. on the dog. If everybody if just joining us here on Facebook, we're talking with Jed Lorette, the senior brand ambassador from Jack Daniels, and we're going to be talking about the Jack Barbecue Invitational that's going to be coming up October. 8th. Of course, everybody in the barbecue. Community knows that right now going on this weekend is the American Royal, the, one of the majors in a barbecue course. Nothing, nothing bigger than the Jack. It is the Masters. If it is the what, what the Masters is to golf, the Jack is to barbecue. The who's who? Yep. It's a uh, yeah. Ken Ken Smith. He can't even type. He's he's trying to type in on the chat yet. He, <laughs> and he, his, you can tell he's you can tell he's drunk typing. He's just like, oh my god, I can't believe it. Jed, I'll oh, be in touch. Jack Jack he's, while he's, typing. he's all over it. He's 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 having conniptions. I guarantee you. he's an emotional guy. Yeah, and you know what you need to do, Jed, when you when you pass in this favor, you need to uh, say now you need to reciprocate and you need to take me up to that lake house he's got. Ooh, oh, he, oh, he just yeah. built a lake house. It's uh, wow, we Jamestown, Tennessee, Jamestown. Yeah, wow, we Jamestown. yeah, big. definitely need to break in the new lake house. Perry said he did some smoked potato skins last weekend. They were great. I bet they were. I've never done that. Smoked potato skins. Anything smoked with I cheese? Be, I bet is that good. would be good. Like, is it a loaded potato? Um, or just the skin? I mean, like you know, he hollows out the potato and then smokes it. I mean. Uh, he'll tell us. He'll. I'm sure he'll tell us later in the in the chat. Um, you've you've had smoked. You've had potato skins at uh, what the chilies. Um, Talk that kind of All right, here we yeah. go. Here we yeah. go. The Al's Nest yeah. Barbecue Supply is the proud home of all butcher barbecue products, from the two-time barbecue world champion David Bosca, who is right now prepping his meats at the American Royal in Kansas City at the Kansas Speedway. His rub, sauce, and grilling oils turn ordinary barbecue into extraordinary barbecue. Grilling addiction, rub to the famous barbecue mud. Get your butcher barbecue products at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Ottawa. And, Jed, if you're wondering, sitting there going, that name sounds familiar. Well, it should. David mm-hmm. Bosca, the 2018 Jack Daniels Invitational World Champion on the staff at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Ottawa. It just doesn't get any better than that. All right, 
No, Let, it doesn't. Let's talk. Let's talk barbecue and Jack Daniels because something that started is as late as 1989. Now mm-hmm. you know that's a, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of years, but it's not. It's 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 steeped in history, but it's steeped in a quick history. Thirty-two years. Yeah, yeah, that's a good run. But what I'm saying is, this thing is turned into an incredible event. Take us back, Jed, through the through the history of this thing. Who were the guys that got in the room and said, "Hey, we need to do this"? How how did this thing get put together? It, it came from the top. Um, we wanted some uh, publicity or some, you know, a little more. Uh, activity on the square at Jack Daniels. This was in 1988 when they were deciding this. And uh, they thought, barbecue, look, we've got a byproduct that we we feed the local cattle and hogs with. On top of that, we end up making all this charcoal for our filtration process. And so it just makes sense that barbecue kind of grow out of that. And so in 1988, when they decided, um, they sent out letters to the grand champions of all these barbecue competitions, and it was a first come first serve. So they actually had to fill out a response to that letter. And uh, once they get that letter in, they filled it up. Only 25 competitors for the first year. Hmm. And uh, after that, it's just exploded. It it is the World Series. It's like the World Cup since it's international now. Absolutely it is. um, it's, How many teams it's a big at the peak? Deal. I'm sorry? How many teams at the peak? Oh, uh, This year we're having a little over 70, but in the past it's been well over 100 teams competing. But that includes Shade Tree uh, Division, um, our international division, domestic division. Uh, we only have a little over 70 this year, though. That, but that's still, that's, that's still a, big, a big contest. Jed, was it held in the same place that it's always been, is that, that it is now, rather? Yeah, Wiseman Park, right off the square. Yeah, you can you can smell the smoke and the whiskey in the air from that location. It's perfect. You know what? You know what makes it so unique is when a first time person that you, you think that you're going to be going into some sort of a barbecue mecca or barbecue arena, some major, uh, yeah. you know, you know, some some chrome and aluminum and flashy signs, tumbleweeds and, and stuff like no. that, and it's. It, it's just a little old, it, folks, it's just a little old park. and uh, Yeah, it, it is. And, and it's in a little old town, and that's yeah. the way we like it. Lynchburg, Tennessee, population 600, has one stop sign. And every drop of jack for the entire planet comes out of this town. What's amazing Regardless is, of where you're listening from. Yeah. What's amazing every of, drop of jack. is Jack and, Daniels is in a dry county. It, it, well, yeah, we're moisture damp now. Yeah. Yeah. Whichever word you didn't like, that's the one I meant to use. <laughs> and, um, so after the first year, did they did they say, "Hey, we've got we've got something here"? What you know? And because it, it after I'm sure from first, from year one to year two, it probably tripled. Well, the truth is, it's like they uh, they invited such a. Um, large it was 25 groups but there's such a large following behind Mm -hmm. these barbecue competitions that they had no choice but to allow it to grow um they did some controls they stopped sending out letters uh they at least they stopped time framing the letters see it wasn't first come first serve anymore everybody had a time frame in which they had to answer and then your name was entered into what we called the bung draw Mm -hmm. So we, we have a bunch of these barrel bungs. That's the, the, the little cork thing on the side of the barrel. And uh, your name was on it, and they would randomly pull names out until they had the number of participants. So not only did you have to be good to actually get your name on one of those bungs, but you had to be lucky to get into the actual invitation. And it is completely invitation only. We're asking for you to come. Yeah, and uh, there's, there's some certain criteria. We'll go over that. Tell us how um, – now, you know, we've got uh, uh, probably the most famous weather person in the United States who's attached to – well, barbecue, and there's another weather person too. Chip Chapman, our Channel 12 weather person here in Chattanooga, is – he's big here. Chip's he, on the grill. Mm-hmm. He, is, he is a god in Lynchburg, Tennessee. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> that man – I guarantee you that man has never bought one single meal in Lynchburg. What uh, how did Chip get involved with the Jack Daniels? 
That, that's a that's a very interesting story. Probably not what you think. Um, see, when we first started off, we sent out um, advertisements saying, hey, we'd like for people to be judges or, you know, volunteers or what have you. If you're interested, send your letter in. And he was picked as one of the judges, and that went on for years. Uh, but I think Chip had uh, enough gift for Gab that Tina, uh, one of the, the ladies here, asked, actually asked him to – be the, the MC or the master of ceremony for the event. And he has done that ever since, but he started off working at the event, not actually helping be the voice of the event. But he, he, he started number one, didn't he? I mean, he's the only MC they've ever had, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, he's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's pretty it, amazing. He it, it, answered an advertisement in the USA today is what he said. And then and he, <laughs> he, and I'm telling you, I'm, folks, I'm telling you, he don't, Chip Chapman does not walk on the ground in Lynchburg. He, he, yeah. is, he is elevated. He, that man is elevated there. I mean, he's good here. I mean, he's well-respected here. But uh, he's un- unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh, go, moving on through, throughout the years, what, um, what are some of the, the big changes? Uh, I know the money from um, 2018 to 2019 uh, went up to, I think, uh, what, doubled plus a little bit. Uh, for the well, winner, the large person. I can give you the number. The grand champion, yeah. uh, the winner of that event, uh, or the winner of the overall, is twenty five thousand mm-hmm. dollars. The reserve grand champion is ten, and then there's a bunch of other prizes. And and look, the the truth is, the fact that you're even at the jack is bragging rights automatically. Yeah, you automatically get the the bragging rights, Mike even if drop. you lose. Uh, all the other guys didn't make it. You, you're the one that made it. Exactly so right. yeah, it's uh, it's a big deal. Jeff, that's one of those mic drop moments for any barbecue competition. You know, the American Royal the Jack World Food Championship says mic drop. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You're at the Jack. Absolutely. Yeah. The um, uh, when you when you go there, it, it's like it's it's. They say the American Royal is like the family reunion of, of barbecue, but the, the Jack. It, I promise you, it doesn't have anything on the Jack Daniels. Uh, first year I went. I, I'm, I'm running around the tent, uh, you know, taking pictures, doing interviews, things like that. I bump into Mike Mills. I get to I get to interview Mike Mills, and then <laughs> you turn around and I bump into uh, there's Doctor Barbecue, and he's sitting there talking with the guy from Kansas. Um, oh, I can't remember his name. Joey. Uh, no, it's it's another guy. I'll think of it in a minute. And then and then we're, I'm watching him judge. You know, I get to walk around and watch him judge, and I come to a table. And and there is the the man himself that when when he comes into your town you know you're getting ready to get hit by a hurricane. Jim Cantori is a yeah, barbecue judge. He's been a judge a couple times. Yeah, and and the the guy's about this tall. He could not a tall man. No, no, he's not a tall man. There's no way he could get no blown. No wonder why he's being blown around. No, he can't be blown around. The wind's above him. <laughs> but nicest guy in the world. The nicest fella in the world. Uh, one of the celebrity judges. It it is truly just a a a, a melting pot of barbecue, and it it is so um, it's so fascinating when you when you walk there. Uh, you know, you go down one row. There's a uh, uh, Darren Worth, 2014 winner, and I think the 20 uh, 20 I think yeah 2014 winner. Uh, Tuffy Stone, the only three time winner. Uh, Johnny Trigg, the only two time winner. Myron Mixon. Uh, everybody who's anybody in that sport is, is is there as long as they're invited. And if they don't you're, get you're invited, exactly. they come anyway just to just to watch, don't they, Jed? Oh, what, what's amazing, all those names, uh, all that celebrity that comes with them, uh, folks, if you were to come to the Jack, you would never, ever in your entire life see a more humble group of people more willing to work with each other. I mean, yeah, they're competitors, but – uh, that community of barbecuers, uh, it's unbelievable. So nice, so willing to explain something. Uh, of course, do that after 2 o'clock when they've already turned in all of their stuff. Um, but, yeah, they're just super, super genuine, down-to-earth uh, men and women who are barbecuing. The, uh, it's amazing. Go ahead, it's, it's, it's like that in the local community barbecue contest as well. The, it's, yeah. the whole barbecue community, Jed, is like that, from my experience. It, it, yeah, uh, everybody gives this idea that, you know, they, they've got they've they have they have achieved uh, greatness in their craft. But at the same time, they're just 
salt of the earth. They just really, if you're passionate about what they're doing, they're willing to share it with you. Indeed. What of um during the during before the jack before it starts? What is the the prep time? Um, like, is, is are there people that just work on this uh, with the company? Is this like their job, or you know, what is the plan time? The um, the get ready time for the for the yearly contest? They've been prepping for months on this event, I and mean, when I say months, uh, they started early summer. Uh, working all the way through this, Miss Debbie Christians is uh, one of the go-to individuals. I mean, when people are responding, they're responding to her, and she's right here in Lynchburg. Uh, and they do everything from decide placement or food. Um, they get cups, the clamshells. Uh, they're pulling bungs. They're they're doing it all. Even getting the porta potties brought in. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's all being logistically worked out. And it's all being done right here. There's a couple people who are full time on that, and then they help with other events. But Miss Debbie, she she's got it going on. She's been doing it for years now. Now, is is Primo still the um, one of the major sponsors? Uh, I believe they. Uh, yeah, they are. Yeah, I'm looking at my list of sponsorships here. We got Thoroughgood, Lodge, Cast Iron, Primo, Traeger Grills. I mm-hmm. think you might know something about that. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, and so um, we, we've got a really good sponsorship. Third Good Boots is supposed to have a giant blow-up boot, which I'm going to take a picture with. Oh, that's neat. So <laughs> the, 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 sponsor, the sponsorship to this thing is probably, it's probably like the old um, Masters when it used to be Cadillac and Travelers, and that's all they yeah. let in. You know, it's, it's probably, they probably have room for about five major sponsors, and it's probably – Get your, get your checkbooks out, fellas, and uh, you, you know if, if you want to put your brand in front of the people that can make your brand a real brand, this is the place you but, need to be. But look at those names. I mean, listen to them. I mean, Thoroughgood, Lodge Cast Iron, Primo, Traeger. They're good quality brands. That's, Absolutely. It's, it's good stuff. And we're going to have Jack Daniels' name right next to it. It's, it's going to be quality. Absolutely. It's, it's quality every year. We're talking with Jed Lorette, the, the uh, senior brand ambassador for Jack Daniels up in Lynchburg, Tennessee. And we're talking about Jack Daniels and barbecue. We're going to take a real quick break. When we come back, we're going to be talking more with Jed and about this great barbecue contest coming up October the 8th in just a few weeks. Are you a Malcolm Reed fan? Sure you are. And we have the entire lineup of how to barbecue right rubs and sauces at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Ottawa. Did you see Malcolm use that classic barbecue rub on a pork butt, then follow it up with his AP rub? Yeah, I saw that too. And you can get them both at the Owlsness Barbecue Supply in Ultawa. Stay with us with our special guest, Jed Lorette from Jack Daniels and Barbecue. We'll be right back. Man, you're doing good, Jed. This is this is fantastic. See, that's the quality stuff you wanted, that giant blow-up boot <laughs> yeah, comment. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. you, you can't be golden all the time. How, how much Jack Daniels do you have to drink to stand in front of that? <laughs> no, I, look, I do it for free. I'll be honest with you. I've got a couple of Thoroughgood boots. Uh, I, I've got a pair right now that I've been wearing since, oh, <laughs> they're about two years old now, and they, they, they just wear well. I'll, I'll just be honest with you. Perry Collins uh, says, Love me some Gentleman Jack. Oh, ah, we've got such a selection. Gentleman Jack is definitely one of those uh, types of whiskey. If you're if you're more towards the um, white wines, light cheeses, like a brie, if you're more of like a milk chocolate, that's going to hit home. That Gentleman Jack is going to be absolutely perfect for you. If you're a big cheese, big wine, big beer, you're looking more of your single barrel whiskeys. Select barrel proof rye. It's outstanding. Now you said Can you, you tell which one I prefer? <laughs> yeah, you uh, <laughs> you said Wednesday that people you can you can come buy a, a barrel of uh, Jack Daniels. You can buy your own barrel. Oh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Full, full. We'll, yeah, we'll sit you down and let you sip out of three, and you get to pick one. And you better like it, man. Wow. Yeah, you're gonna get two hundred and fifty fifths of whiskey out of one barrel. And how much is a barrel? 
Well, I mean, I'm not done with the experience. Can you put a price on an experience <laughs> like that? I mean, you get to pick it. We put it in a bottle. Your name's on all the bottles. You get put on a wall. You get a crystal decanter, some rock glasses. It's going to ship to the nearest liquor store that you choose. And it's a solid summer's worth of whiskey. Um, <laughs> about a about ten to $15,000, uh, depending on – and that includes shipment to your location and um, taxes in your state. So believe it or not, out of all 50 states, Delaware can get it cheaper than Tennessee. Really? Um, yeah, because they have no liquor tax. What about, uh, do you get to keep the barrel too? Yeah, if you want the barrel, we'll ship the barrel with it. That's awesome. Can you buy yeah, a barrel? A, can you buy a barrel, Jed, if I want to come over and buy just an empty barrel? They sell oh, barrels? yeah, yeah. We can fit two of them in a Prius right now <laughs> if you want one. We'll National Lampoon's that thing on your way back to Ottawa. I'm trying to think of the burger place that I've been to. There's a famous burger place in Chicago that they have their, all their whiskeys are on tap. Yeah, sounds like a great place. <laughs> and it's it's kind of a metal place, but they have actually the, the barrels right there. They're tapping out of it, and darn it, the name is uh, escaping me. And, and Jeff, I spent a lot of time in Chicago, uh, either downtown Chicago, Schaumburg, Aurora, Gurney. Schaumburg and downtown, they both have, they have a restaurant. They, they have the burger place right there. I, I grew up in that area. I'm just drawing a blank, but I'll, and I'll think of it and I'll, I'll get with you, Jed, on them. But um, yeah, it'd be right up your alley. I got buddies of mine that still live up there, so I can definitely turn them on to it. Ken Smith says, Steve. great show, guys. Yes, I've had my known blows up, blown off my face a couple different times smelling the mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I leaned, down, I leaned down there and smelled it. And the end, I said, I, I, didn't, I didn't get close enough. And the guy goes, no, come on down there. Get, get down there and smell it. Yeah, get a little closer. <laughs> yeah, get a little closer. He's a yeah, man. so the T-shirt I want them to start selling at the hardware store is kind of like one of those theme park ones. It says, I rode the fermenter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, we can't do, we can't do photos in that building because of the amount of alcohol floating in the air. Real quick, just for the Facebook crowd, what's what's the name of that room that I'm in right there, Jed? All right, so that's the backside of Barrel House 114. Uh, the Barrel House is called the George Green Barrel House, named after the Green family. Um, that's the uh, larger kind of like. That's Clinic.com. Talk Radio 102.3. All right, here we go. Hey, if ribs are your thing and I have the thing for you, Craig Sherry's famous Texas rib jelly and Texas rib candy, plus his chicken and barbecue rubs, all are available at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Ottawa. Treat your ribs with a taste of Texas from Craig Sherry. We are with Jed Lorette from Jack Daniels. He is the he is the ambassador of Jack Daniels. What a, what a great job. I, I could not. I could not think of a better job to have. On one hand, I can't. I thought I had a I good job. Think, I thought I had a good <laughs> job. On one hand, I can't think of one jobs that have more than that. I, I, how many, how many, uh, Mr. Manning? Welcome, welcome to Jack Daniel. How many bottles would you, would you and your brother like to take home? Okay, we got that for you. We I, got that's, that that's, for what you. You, that's what he does. He he just <laughs> he just takes care of people and all their their uh, their spirits. The their ultimate, spirits the names. ultimate cordial concierge. And you can. We were talking at the break. You can buy a barrel. At Jack Dan. Now, how do you go about buying a barrel, Jed? If uh, I if, say, if, is, say, if, say if Jeff and I want to drive over there, we're going to bring my pickup truck and we're going to, we want to buy a, a, an empty barrel that was used in the in making Jack Daniels. So you're going to make your way downtown to the square, okay. all of about two blocks away from the actual distillery. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the Lynchburg Hardware General Store, which is actually our company gift shop, mm -hmm. and we have the barrel shop right next to it. Yeah, and you can pick up, you can pick out your barrel that you want to take home. It's not like, oh, give me a barrel, and then just go find one for you. What is You'll walk one? through the store and pick it. How much is a barrel? Uh, it ranges from about one twenty-five to three hundred. So now, the reason for the higher table. price is, because, what's that? Make a great table. Absolutely. Table, How about this? Awesome. All right. So you walked into the hardware store and you want to buy a barrel, but you realize that we can turn it into a bar stool, a bench, a swing, a rocker, a doghouse, a flower pot, a lazy Susan, some coasters, a coat hanger, a coat rack. You earn you your con you earn your concierge license, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me to repeat it. Is this not your first interview? 
Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, look, it's so cool. Uh, our hardware store has two stories of all the Jack Daniel stuff you never knew you wanted to buy. Oh, I bet. I bet. I've yeah. been in that store. I've been in that store. Um, it's uh, open. It's, it's you know, that, that's what's. That's one of the 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 cool things about the um, about the Jack Daniels the, the barbecue contest is going up to that square and going to uh, Miss Barry Bobo's to eat. You probably can't get in that weekend. It's a little tough, but. Um, um, they we do. might still have some reservations open on Saturday, so definitely look if you want to do it. If you know some people, right? Yeah, yeah. we we mm -hmm. might still have some openings, so just uh, go online. So you, you go to Miss Barry Bobo's and eat. That's the uh, country style. I think it's family style. It's, it's still family style, even with yeah. COVID well, going on. Um, yeah. uh, since since COVID, you're still in a room, but we've separated to to four, six, yeah. ten, however your group comes in, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll plate it up and bring it to you. So if it's just you and your wife or your husband, we'll sit you at a, a separate table if that's what you want. Yeah. And uh, if you're a big group, we can accommodate that too. Tell tell everybody, and I know you've probably been to this thing. Tell everybody about the secret Thursday night party up on the. What do they call oh, that up on? Is that up on the? They call it where? Uh, it? Um, yeah, Barbecue Hill. That's yeah. the the night before actually. So what we do is uh, all the competitors come in. They don't have to cook. We're cooking for them. There's live music. Um, there's whiskey for sipping, and uh, they get to hang out the night before. Barbecue Hill though is a beautiful spot. It overlooks Lynchburg. You can see down into the town. Uh, into the distillery. You can see where Jed went to elementary school. I know that's what your listeners want to know. Uh, I mean, it's great stuff. It's beautiful. Plus, the sun sets in kind of like a direction where you're looking at the mountains or the hills. And it's a really just great place. That could be dangerous for some of those younger teams making their first visit. Well, those old they, veterans, the, they uh, ain't going up on the hill. They they say oh, they say they don't have guardrails up there. They say the contest has never been won on Barbecue Hill, but it has been lost yes. on Barbecue yes. Hill. Uh, yes. it it has been lost up up there. It's all about how you treat Jack. Exactly right. The um, barbe the uh, contest coming up. October the 8th um, in Lynchburg, Tennessee. Jed, coming up from uh, Chattanooga, if somebody wants to do the uh, the full weekend experience, I'm talking about going through the uh, distillery, doing the tour, uh, driving over there to the park. Uh, there is no admission charge to the park. You just you just park, you just go in, and uh, there's, That's correct. there's all sorts of uh, vendors there. Uh, oh. One of the neatest things is the history of they've got a, a little – uh, set up at least when I went the last time, uh, the history of the like the like the big green egg, the Kamado smoker. They had old from the 50s and 40s of old Kamados that these that the people from you know, that were the some of the soldiers that invaded Japan brought back with them that started wow. the Kamado movement. I don't know if you, if you saw that or not, Jed. Uh, for, I, I I'm just a history I buff. A That's just, I, as a history buff. That just that just fascinated me. Most people would walk just right by it, not even, you know, give it a nod. Um, all sorts of vendors, all sorts of, uh, I mean, you know, it's the funnel cake, fried Well, I can, fried I can give Oreos. you a breakdown, uh, especially yeah. if you're coming from Chattanooga. You have two choices. You can go up 24 or you can keep heading west on 64. Uh, if you come into town on 64, uh, you're going to go north on uh, 50, 55. When you enter town, uh, if you don't have a reservation to sleep already in Lynchburg, you're going to want to look for a spot in Fayetteville, Winchester, Tullahoma, uh, Shelbyville. Uh, look, we might have only 600 people, but before COVID, we were breaking numbers well over 30,000 for those two days in that weekend. Yeah. So um, we're, we're going to have designated parking, but you're exactly right. We're going to have food trucks. We're going to have local vendors. We're going to have arts and crafts on the square it's it's a great time if you want a day trip to just take your family somewhere it's a fun quiet little town that hosts one of the biggest barbecue competitions and the town just comes out for it all the arts and crafts you can imagine all the little food kind of stuff the stores are going to be open on that those days and so it, it's a great experience and if you want to see your favorite guy or, or gal barbecue person uh, this is the place to go you can get uh, most of them will have like a little rope set up out, you know, from a, at a distance. But if you get there around, what's first turn in noon or noon thirty? Uh, I, I think they start off with 
chef's choice and that might be a little bit before noon yeah um, that and to watch to watch that turn, around noon. to watch that turn in is fascinating chef's choice is kind of anything you want to put on and this is when they doll up the dishes you'll see it's, it's incredible in it in it jet it's it helps to, i mean if you want to imagine it it helps set the palate for the rest of the day and so you, you need a palate warmer this is the appetizer mm -hmm. Uh, but it is at the chef's choice what they want to actually put in that clamshell to take over to the judges. And what they will do, they will they will doctor up these these uh, trays that they bring them in, and it really shows the um, creativity. Yeah, man, it's it's just it's unbelievable what some of these people are capable of doing. Um, and, and what's amazing is is that it is as scrutinized as the Royal, the Houston Livestock Rodeo uh, Barbecue, uh, Memphis in mm -hmm. May, you name it. It is they're as meticulous in their judging as any of these other competitions. Yeah. I was talking to Tuffy, and his presentation, he lost two points, which means he lost the grand one year. And so just presentation alone, that's how close he was to the other guy or gal. Yeah. And uh, he said, yeah, so presentation matters as much as the food. Oh, absolutely. I mean, those, those guys, I mean, you'll have, you'll have one point separating uh, three teams, first and fifth. Yeah. I mean, you know, these guys, they deal in one thousandth and one hundredth <laughs> of a point <laughs> as far as their scores. It, it's amazing. What, um, and when you go there, because it, it, it's crowded. I mean, uh, every time I've gone, I've either, I went in either the night before or I, I drove up real early where the traffic wasn't bad. But um, I can imagine that traffic backs up because that little road going in there. It's, I mean, folks, this is, I mean, this is this is like driving into uh, around here. It would be like driving into Sail Creek. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're better off yeah. at sometimes going in the 64, like Jed said. Um, the well, low, yeah. the low road less traveled. Where do they? Can they park at the um, at the Moore County High School and they get bust in? I think that's in what the best past, way to do. That's what we 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 rented out. Uh, Jack rented out some Gray Line buses. Um, we have additional parking across the street, but that'll get filled up really quick. Our visitor center parking it'll be filled up really quick. So they'll start parking people in the grass down at the high school and busing them down yeah. to the square. And those buses go back and forth all day long. So don't feel like you're trapped down in the square if that's you know if you're you're ready to go home. You've seen everything and everyone you want to see. Um, but yeah, we we we're gonna have designated parking all over and around the square area. Oh, you'll you'll love it if you go. Hey, we're gonna take our last break real quick. We're talking with Jed Rett from Jack Daniels, the ambassador of Jack Daniels. And it's kind of like being the ambassador to Australia. There ain't a yeah. whole there ain't a whole it's lot that can, yeah, it, it ain't a whole similar. lot that can go wrong. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Same, hey, same. Green Mountain Grills are the pellet smoker of choice for Big Mo, Jim Elzer, Sterling Smith, and dozens of other professional barbecue competitors. Come by the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply and see the complete line of the Green Mountain Pellet Grills in action. The best pellet smoker your money can buy, period. Green Mountain Grills. We'll be right back with Jed Lorette of Jack Daniels. Stay with us. All right, I remember the place, Jed. Oh. Kuma's Corner. I'm going to have to look that up while you're here you or have while to you're write saying that down, it. And trust me, you will not be disappointed. And the one downtown, they actually have, I mean, Bullet, Jack Daniels, all their whiskeys are on tap. Uh, yeah, I've got one, and it says uh, Kuma's Corner West Loop. The West Loop, yep. And then there's, all one, right. there's one in Schaumburg. Ooh. Look, they've got like 1,700 reviews, and it's a 4.5. Good job, guys. One day, the bathroom wasn't clean, and that's what it cost them. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, Just, one, oh. that one 14.5, somebody went Look, in there when the bathroom wasn't clean, and got, the, they hammered him. All you can't trust burgers. a place that doesn't have one bad review. That's all, right. All their burgers are named after metal songs like Megad or, or bands Megadeth or whatever. And everybody's tatted up, and it's just the vibe is different than any place you've ever been. Yeah, there's no t there's no tats really? at the Jack Daniels, I assure you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Don't get me started. <laughs> uh, 
So they don't have any burgers named after Gordon Lightfoot or anything like <laughs> no, that? No, there's, there's not the record they have in Fitzgerald. Mm, yeah. It's my favorite song from him. <laughs> dude, almost brings me to tears every time I hear it. I love yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> it is my favorite song of his, too, by the way. Mm. It's not my favorite. It's not my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Steve's up there going Gordon Lightfoot. Gordon Lightfoot. How do we get off on Gordon Lightfoot? You know he. You know he was in Chattanooga about three years ago. He's like eighty-four years old and he still performs. It's incredible. Oh, it's incredible. There's oh, a, look at the Rolling Stones. Holy cow! Well, they're missing one hundred forty-eight years old. Charlie, yeah, yeah. Charlie Watts with Elvis now. Yeah. Oh goodness. There's a there's a brewing company up there, Great Lakes Brewing Company, and they make a beer called the Edmonds Fitzgerald, and you drink oh. that. And you take it and you go, it's got a chocolate flavor. And then all of a sudden, it tastes like a shipwreck. I mean, <laughs> it does. I mean, the aftertaste is like a shipwreck. It's, oh, my goodness. It's actually really cool. But What's the uh, but, what's the uh, proof? Do you know what the alcohol percentage is? It's like 7.4. Oh, okay. All right. What's the, what's the, what's the Barry Manilow taste like? 1.3. <laughs> <laughs> The Rod you know, Stewart, like like Seven Up. <laughs> uh, there's a there's Warm a new brew seven. house out of Nashville. Uh, I, I love IPAs, and they've got a citrus IPA up there uh, that's just absolutely unbelievable. And so, if you're ever in Nashville, look up the Bearded Iris. You get to travel a lot, Jen. Uh, well, obviously, I'm going to preface this with yes before. I was actually at the Houston Livestock Barbecue um, the February before COVID hit mm -hmm. uh, in March. So the moment I, it seemed like the moment the plane landed, uh, they were locking everything down. Wow. Uh, West Virginia, Nashville a lot. I don't ever get, I, look, I'll just give you a heads up. I was supposed to go to South Pittsburgh for the Cornbread Festival. Mm -hmm. I was really hoping to come back with a nickname like Cornbread Jed would have been really good. I think it would have stuck. Um, but I didn't get to go to that festival. I was really looking forward to it. I'm not bitter or anything. Yeah. I've been a couple times. It's, it's, it's a nice Hey, fest. the Cornbread Festival is awesome. It's a nice fest. Yeah. Well, it's, I, it's always on know, my birthday. Uh, it's always the last uh, last uh, weekend in the uh, in April. It's always around my birthday. It's a good I've – so, I've celebrated there. It's a I right think of spring. Five times. It's a right of spring. Everything seems to be popping. Everything seems to be opening back up a little more. And uh, as that as that happens, I'm sure I'll become a lot more busy. But um, yeah, no, it's it's definitely a blessing and honor doing what I do. I never thought. I mean. Talk radio 102.3. Owl's Nest Barbecue Supplies, now the home of Royal Oak Charcoal. We have the soon-to-be-famous Royal Oak 100% charcoal pellets. That's right, 100% charcoal pellets in stock, ready to go for your smoking pleasure. Charcoal flavor on your pellet grill, that's what you get when you get your Royal Oak pellets, your Royal Oak charcoal pellets at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Ottawa. We're finishing up the interview with Jed Lorette, we've got three minutes to go, Jed. The uh, Jack Daniels coming up, the Jack Daniels Invitational Barbecue Championship coming up October the 8th in Lynchburg, Tennessee. What um, best time to get there if you want to see if your favorite barbecue personality is going to be there? Give someone a, a quick Saturday schedule where they can do, do it all in one day. I'll make it easy. Come early. Come really early. Uh, you know, the, the earlier you uh, actually show up in town, maybe the more access you're going to have to that personality. Uh, you're going to be walking around what we call like the little village down in Wiseman Park where all the, the barbecue guys and gals are actually set up. Um, but when you come in, if you have plans on doing anything else, like taking a tour, going to Bobo's, walking around with your kids, uh, if you want to see that barbecue person, whoever it is, you definitely want to get there early. Uh, believe me, we wake up early around here. Oh, they do. Um, get there early. Um, what time does the park open for um, for uh, spectators and um, and the like? 
I don't know if um, I don't know if we have an opening time. Uh, there won't be any traffic down on the square, so once you park, you can pretty much walk around without any you know hindrance by cross traffic. I don't know if there's an actual opening of the gate down at Wiseman Park. I think it's just open because the barbecue you know folks they have to the competitors have to come and go if they mm-hmm. forget something yeah. or if they need something. Uh, they have to be able to get out, so I think it's pretty much open. Most of them are going to be eating breakfast anyways on the square, so you might be able to stop at one of the cafes and catch them eating their biscuits and gravy. Well, Jed, thank you so much for being with us. We sure appreciate it. We've got about uh, it's one, my honor. We've got about one minute to go. Where can people, if they want to follow Jedediah Lorette, where can they go? <laughs> I'd like to say I'm famous, but I don't have anywhere. Um, they you can come now. and visit me at Jack Daniels Distillery. How about that? That sounds like a winner, Jed. Thank you so much. Next Friday night, stay with us. Jed, Max, Jeff Maxwell, and Steve Ray will be reviewing the uh, blue and gray barbecue contest that's going to be held tomorrow in Chickamauga, and then we're going to move on to the American Royal, which is going on this weekend also at the Kansas Speedway in Kansas City. Until next Friday night on the radio side, stick around, Jed. We're going to do a few minutes on the Facebook side. Good night and a good luck. Thank you, Joe. Jed Lorette is going to spend a few moments with us here on the Facebook side of things on the Austin's Barbecue Supply Show. What um, How long have you been with uh, Jack Daniels, Jed? Uh, I've been with Jack for seven years now. Seven years, wow. What did you do? Uh, what, what was like the, pre, the pre-Jack uh, Daniels uh, career for um, Jed Lorette? <clears throat> I, I was five years uh, naval intelligence. Um, after I got done doing that, I, re- I left the Navy and I started working for different agencies for the U S government. Oh. Uh, I was, uh, with a group, uh, a team that developed, uh, technology platforms for special forces groups. Well, so cool. So you, so you're really, uh, I guess you're one of those guys that can kill somebody with a big pen. No, no, no. <laughs> we call those folks Chuck Norris's, man. Uh, they deserve all their honors. They deserve all the accolades. They they did the hard work. We just made sure they came home. And so it was it was my opportunity to build a platform that allowed that person to stick their head out around the mountainside oh, without okay. sticking their head out. Oh, okay. I, I get it. I get it. Well, yeah. you were a fantastic guest and, and – um... Uh, I was just looking to see. Uh... Jed, appreciate you. I got to go with uh, my son's football game. Great. Uh, All right, good luck. Thanks for joining us. It, I was looking was to nice see. To if, I was looking to see if there's any uh, questions from the uh, in the chat. Everybody mostly just had comments and were were listening intently. What um what do you, what's the um the game day for Jed at the uh, Jack at the at the at the contest? What uh, if you what have you got to do? As far as what is it going to look like for me? Yeah, what do you got to do? I'll probably be following somebody around with a camera and a microphone talking to all the competitors. Mm -hmm. Again, it's going to be a hard day. I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but, you know, somebody's got to talk to them. (laughs) What? (laughs) You're pathetic. What, um, what about, uh, you know, the, the, I I tell everybody, everybody says, well, we want to stay for the awards. I say, well, be careful what you wish for. Uh, that, that's, that's about a two hour, um, event because, um, They give awards for, you know, they give prettiest pickup truck, best rims. I mean, they go down the list, man. If uh, Look, the total prize um, package, the total of all of the prizes together is $66,000. That is huge. That's huge in the barbecue yeah. world. That and is so huge. Th- uh, that includes the twenty five k for the grand mm-hmm. champion and then the reserve. And so, but still, but yeah, you're exactly right. It's like who brought the prettiest pig? You're yeah. going to get an award. So it's it's a long, it's a long drawn out um, event, but it's worth being there at the end when they get down to the final, uh, when they start at number ten, at the Jack yeah. Daniels Invitational. When they go down that line, you can I swear you can hear a pin drop in that in that barn. I was going to say, and it's it in a is, barn, folks. I mean, it's in a barn with straw. Right. And I mean, it's nothing. It's not in your um, curtained uh, auditorium like at the at the church. <laughs> it's That's it's out exactly there. Right. I mean, I have been there when it was freezing. I mean, I, I literally yeah. froze one night, and I've been there when I was sweating and and I couldn't get enough lemonade in me. 
to, well, to cool Tuffy off. Tuffy and I were talking about that. He was at one of the comp. I think it was 2018, maybe. It might no. It might have been 13. He said he woke up that morning. His dad and him were getting ready to get out there to the grill, and uh, it was 27 degrees yeah. outside that morning. And so uh, it can be cold, it can be hot, but we're hoping for beautiful weather and no rain. Well, it's a typical fall day in Tennessee. You don't, you don't, you never yeah. know what you're going to get. Um, Johnny Trigg, two-time winner. Um, Tuffy Stone, I believe, three-time. The only three-time winner. Only person that's uh, won. Yeah. Only person that's won it back to back. He's got to be a favorite. Travis Clark, I'm sure Travis will be there. Um, he won it in 2019. He is the. Uh, I, guess, well, I guess Tuffy and Travis will be the longest reigning champions. Uh, Tuffy won it twice, and then. Travis, by by COVID, has been the holders for two years of it now, and uh, the first twenty five thousand dollar winner, uh, Travis Clark. Uh, did you get? A, did you ever get a chance to talk with these guys after they win? Uh, this will be my first year actually doing any kind of hanging out with them on the square mm-hmm. uh, down in the the little pit area. So this will be my first time walking around interviewing anybody. So I'm I'm look. I got to be honest with you. Uh, my wife and I were discussing this just the other night. A couple years ago, I could have killed somebody with my my smoked Boston butt. Uh, <laughs> and I've slowly – look, I really want – it's like almost it's questioning my manhood at this point, so I really want to get good at it. Absolutely. And so my son and I have done ribs. They're outstanding now. Uh, we did a brisket, which my wife loves brisket, and so I'm, I'm getting a little better. So I'm, I'm hoping to pull any kind of little tidbit of information out from them uh, when I'm talking to well, them. Now, let me tell you, when you when you entertain and you um, are taking Ken Smith around, because Ken's probably already got ringing my cell phone to get your cell phone number. When he comes there to do his podcast, you make him reciprocate and give you a cooking lesson. He is one. Oh, of the, absolutely. He is one of the finest barbecuers in the middle of this state i assure you he cooks on a he's got several grills but he cooks on a pit barrel and uh, he is a whiz bang on that pit barrel and uh, he knows Holy how to, he knows how to cook food and he'll he'll get you he makes a great turkey and uh he'll, he'll show you how to do a turkey and i'll show you how to do a pork yeah. butt we did a turkey with him at, at the at the station one time at the shop he came down we did a little pit barrel days and um we, <laughs> he had the only turkey i ever saw that we couldn't get finished <laughs> <laughs> we, had, we could not get that thing finished. We finally, we finally threw it in an oven, tried to finish it, couldn't get it finished in there. We finally threw it in a, wrapped it in, wrapped it in aluminum foil, threw it in a cooler, and I said, "Take it home and finish it." I got to get home. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So that that was the key. That's what I figured out. I was reading some blog sites about barbecuing, and uh, if you've got any novice like myself listening. Invest in pink butcher paper. Um, that's that's what I've been wrapping up in. It helps to bring the temp up, uh, kind of retain some of the juices. That was that was the godsend right there. Pink butcher paper. You heard that? Yeah. From Jed Lorette, the uh, yeah. ambassador of Jack Daniels, soon to be on your <laughs> soon to have be hosting his own YouTube channel, Cooking with oh. Jed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and the how pink... to make shoe leather. <laughs> That's fantastic. Jed, thank you so much. If I do get a chance, I'm on the fence about getting up there this year, um, but I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to ride up there with Jeff, and uh, if all things happen, I'm going to be uh, – I'll call you a couple days in advance, and I expect the VIP tour and the uh, I can't believe you're not here or I can't believe yeah. you're here, I can't believe I get to meet you attitude. And uh, <laughs> it makes everybody feel special that I know – you do at the uh, at the Jack Daniels Distillery there, in the tiny hamlet of Lynchburg, Tennessee. Well, we'll definitely try to treat you right when you show up if you come this year. All right, we'll do it. Thank you, Jed, Lorette. We sure appreciate you from Jack Daniels and everybody on the Facebook Ooh. side. Thank you for hanging with us, Lyle, Al, and Perry, and the likes, and Tom. We we sure appreciate it. And we'll be back here next Friday for a uh, a uh, wrap up of the uh, uh, the blue and gray. Now tomorrow, if you're if you're out running around. Tomorrow, at, um, uh, the, the turn-ins are at 3 o'clock, start at 3 o'clock tomorrow down in Chickamauga on the front lawn of the uh, Gordon Lee Mansion. The Blue-Gray Barbecue Contest is going to be there, and um, Jeff Jeff will be there competing. Uh, a whole lot of teams will be there competing. Um, you can go down there and watch them compete. Uh, the turn-ins are at 3, and the awards will be probably about 5-ish or something around there if you want to get down there, but it's a fun time. 
and of course the American Royal at the Kansas Speedway is going on right now. As we speak, teams are prepping their meets in anticipation of turn-ins tomorrow. The first night is the Open, and the second night is the Invitational. So a big weekend of championship barbecue and another big weekend coming up October 8th with the Jack Daniels uh, Invitational Barbecue Contest. Until next Friday night, signing off for Jeff Maxwell, for Jed, this is Steve Ray, wishing you all the luck. And as we always say, good night and good night.